This Firefly Les Paul style guitar was not what I expected. Hey everybody, Jay Allen here. Welcome back to the channel. So you've probably heard of the Firefly guitar brand. I've actually reviewed a few Firefly guitars on this channel and I've owned, I don't know, several of these uh, Firefly branded guitars. I started with the, the red semi-hollow body guitar that kind of launched the Firefly brand. These were uh, they're just a red semi-hollow body. Uh, I think this was back before they started doing the stainless steel frets, the one I had. It was one of the early models. Kind of before Firefly rebranded and became JSN, and then they really started to kind of improve the build quality of their guitars. And then for some reason I, I had a good deal on a second uh, 338 and so I bought it but both of those guitars I've since sold uh, and I have a uh, Stratocaster style guitar that my wife got for me back in November of last year uh, so that one I'm keeping because it was a gift from my wife so obviously I'm gonna I'm gonna hold on to that one and uh, that's it's a decent guitar uh, in the interest of full disclosure I've been, I'm in a band right now and I'm playing uh, lead guitar. So I've been playing with this Firefly Strat style guitar for quite a bit. The other day at practice, this was last week, uh, the couple of the screws that hold the saddles on in the bridge, one of them actually backed out enough that it fell off. <laughs> so uh, I'm not sure what that's all about, why those would come loose if it was something that I did uh, when I was setting the intonation and didn't tighten them down uh, well enough or what, but I'm gonna I'm gonna look into that and keep an eye on it, and I'll, I'll I might do an update on on the Firefly and how it holds up because a lot of people say okay, yeah the cheap guitars are good and everything, but they won't last. That's that's one of the arguments people make against the cheap guitars. So we'll see. We'll we'll put it through its paces. So and then I had a double cut uh, red double cut that was all mahogany. That one I didn't really care for the for the sound. It had P90s in it. And maybe I just don't like P90s, or maybe these weren't that good. But it played okay. It was it was pretty lightweight and everything. Uh, so I ended up selling that one. So really, I only own, other than this one, I own one uh, of the Firefly uh, guitars. I've never owned the the Les Paul style, and uh, I'm, I don't know. I've never been a huge Les Paul guy. I mean, I don't I I don't have anything against them. I like them. They tend to be heavy. Most of the Les Paul style guitars I've played, uh, the frets on it are like a mile high, and so I haven't really favored those guitars, but I've wanted one of these for a while. Uh, the price was right, uh, they were on sale. These, This is not sponsored, I didn't get uh, this sent to me. Uh, not that that really matters, but anyway, uh, let's check it out. Let's uh, talk about my experience uh, ordering this guitar. Okay, so I got this guitar from the Guitars garden.com website and this is the official site of the firefly guitar uh, i know they do sell a few models on amazon but primarily they sell them directly from the website so be aware i guess there's some copycats out there already uh, so <laughs> you know it's pretty bad when the copycats are copying the copycats so anyway uh if you go to that site, there's some pretty good deals. Uh, these guitars are normally pretty close to, uh, this one's 240, 230, a little over 200, that one's 199. But if you scroll down, then you get these that are on sale because they haven't moved uh, quickly enough. And so they've been sitting here for quite a while. And so this is what I ended up buying, was one of these that was on sale. So it was 189.96. And uh, with my shipping, shipping was $27. Uh, shipping was via FedEx. And uh, they didn't charge tax, which I'm, I'm kind of surprised about. Um, so anyway, I ordered this guitar, as you can see, on October 7th. I'm in Michigan. Guitars Gardens uh, shipping warehouse, I guess you could say, is in California. Uh, and so that was nine days ago, according to uh, the stamp on my email and I got it yesterday. So that would be eight day turnaround time. So about a week uh, from the time I ordered to the time that I received it. So keep that in mind. This isn't like Amazon where you get the guitar a day later or two days later. It's gonna take some time because uh, they do their own fulfillment. And so total 
to $16.96, which is pretty darn good uh, for a well-built guitar, but let's check it out and see how well-built it is. Okay, so here it is. Uh, this is how they're shipped in uh, just a rectangle style box. Um, it does say Firefly, designed and backed by JSN. Find your stage on it. It doesn't say guitar on it, but if you know what a Firefly is, you know that there's a guitar in here. So like I say, if you're uh, in an area that's prone to people stealing things off your porch, might want to have somebody sign for it. So let's see, this is, uh, their package, their stuff's packaged pretty well. And uh, another nice thing about their packaging is it's in a foam, molded foam case. So that's really nice. You're not gonna have any issues uh, with shipping on these guitars. See, look at that, that's, you know. And when we open it up, it's gonna be molded right to the shape of the guitar. Even my fender wasn't shipped this way. <laughs> so, but fender's not coming from China either. Unless you're ordering a Squire debut, which people will argue is an offender. So, uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, okay. Here we go. Okay. So, styrofoam block, guitar wrapped in the traditional foam wrap. Okay. There it is. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is a Les Paul style guitar with the Relic finish on it. This is the first Relic guitar I've ever I've ever bought, and uh, <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> it's really weird. It's uh, it looks. Like it's worn and it's got some cracks in it, which is cool, but then you can tell it's been, it's been finished over. It's, you know, it's got clear gloss on it. So it's, it's weird. And the clear gloss has got some little pits in it, but that could be the distressing that they've, that they've used on it. It would have been cool if they would have, uh, you know, sort of sanded down the back of the neck, but it's not real sticky. Frets are beautiful, of course. They really know how to do the ball end frets, good. These are stainless frets, got edge binding on it. Uh, nice uh, inlays, the inlays are tight. Oop, there's a little hole right there on that one. Uh, rosewood fretboard, which I dig that. These are kind of a Grover style tuner. Uh, this is a set neck. So this is a, yep, mahogany body neck, rosewood fretboard. It says flame maple top. The thing about the relics is you can just look at it and go, that's not really <laughs> real, but anyway, it looks cool. It's kind of neat. So let's see what else we got. Two humbuckers, uh, two pneumatic bridge. Uh, string height is not terrible, but not exactly where I would put it. So it needs to come down a little bit. Um, headstock has got that crackle look to it. That's cool. Um, truss rod cover, probably a Bone nut. Oh, it does say bone nut. Nickel strings. Uh, this is a. It's got the little volute on the neck there. This looks like a scarf joint on the headstock. The scarf joint actually runs from about here up, so the joint is actually past the 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 neck here. And a lot of scarf joints are like right through where they always break. So that's that's some smart uh, design there. And then the volo volute or whatever you call it that adds a little bit of little bit of meat right there so the head doesn't snap off. All right, let's get down to some real technical stuff on this and then we'll get to playing it and see how it sounds. Uh, if I didn't mention, it is heavy. Uh, they could really start chambering these and it would probably uh, be a vast improvement. I gotta say, this is probably a good eight and a half pounds. Uh, so let's check out the neck straightness. Neck is really straight. And we're, we got a 
a one and 11 sixteenths inch uh, nut. So this is about a 40, almost a 47 and a half millimeter wide nut. And then at the 12th fret, we're at about a two and a eighth inch wide. And let's see the curvature of the fretboard is probably a 12. It's pretty flat. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty darn close to 12. So it's a 12 inch uh, fretboard radius. And uh, let's see what else can we talk about. Um, it's got a 24 and three quarter inch scale length fret height. So it's between two and 2.25 uh, millimeters uh, the, at the 12th fret. And that equates to about point zero seven inches. Um, three way switch, two humbuckers, like I said, um, and pick art actually, uh, volume tone and uh, decent strap buttons on it. Uh, speaking of which, let's put it on a strap and see if it hangs good. Yeah, hangs pretty good. Very little neck dive. It's pretty, pretty even. And if I didn't mention, it comes with a cable and an Allen wrench. Uh, so enough babbling. Why don't we get this plugged in and play it? Okay, got everything all set up right now. Um, I'm gonna run through my Veilton GP200. Uh, this is a multi-effects pedal that I reviewed just a little while ago, uh, going into uh, Reaper. <laughs> Obviously, the guitar is not tuned, so let's tune it up. Uh, real quick, while I'm tuning this up, I've got a loose tuning key here. All the rest of them seem good, but this one's got slop to it, or I don't know how to explain it. Okay, I think we got our tuned up. Okay, that's so that's the bridge pickup. Here's the uh, neck pickup. And middle. That sounds good. That's got good, it's got good tone. Uh, this three-way switch is really nice. Seems really good. Okay, let's try out the knobs. Okay, uh, I have to stop here for a second because it was at this point in the video where I made a stupid blunder that I didn't even realize. Uh, I was playing with the volume knobs on, on the guitar and I had no idea that uh, this is the way a Gibson Les Paul functioned. Let me tell you how I thought it functioned. That the individual volume knobs controlled, you know, when the uh, pickup selector was in the middle, that you could use the individual volume knobs to blend the uh, volume of each pickup. What I didn't realize was that if you turn either one of those volume knobs all the way down, it completely cuts the signal from both pickups. Uh, I thought it was wired wrong. I even say it in the video um, that I thought it was wired wrong. And then uh, I looked up some wiring diagrams on the internet. Of course, there's all kinds of different ways to wire up guitars. And then I looked at my Epiphone SG, uh, played around with that. And sure enough, same thing. If you turn, if you have the pickup selector in the middle so that both pickups are active, if you turn either one of the volume knobs to zero, you will cut the signal from both pickups. So you have to have, like if you wanna blend the pickup 
volume, you have to leave one of the pickups at least on, you know, one. Um, you know, obviously if you blend one of the pickups down to the point where you can't hear it, then you might as well use uh, the selector switch and be on that particular pickup. Uh, so I don't think I ever blend it. I don't think I ever turned a volume on a, on like the SG or some of the other Les Paul style guitars that I've owned. And so I was really perplexed when that happened. So now I realize that it's, that's, that's normal. So that part of the video is, you know, my error. Uh, and then, so what I did ended up doing, uh, with the, uh, pick or the tuners is just tighten the screws on the end and then they were fine. Uh, so they just must have got loose somehow. And then, okay, so then I had some <laughs> issues trying to get this thing tuned up. And I always seem to have problems with new uh, guitars that I review and, and tuning. And a lot of people will post in the comments, man, that thing's out of tune. And so I did the intonation on this, took it to the bench, set the intonation up so it was perfect. And then I'm, I'm playing a little bit and it's, it's, you know, still out of tune. And I did take the, uh, I did take my calipers in and measure the fret height. The fret height on these are a little taller than say the frets on, uh, one of my Strat style guitars. But then the thing that I think uh, really impacts uh, the, the tone, not just the tone, but the tuning is the strings. And uh, so I measured these strings. These are eights. So it comes with eights. I normally play no less than nine. Sometimes I'll play tens. So I happen to have a package of tens. So I'm going to put tens on this and uh, tune it up. I'll probably have to set the intonation again on it and then check it out. So I, I lowered the action on it as well and it, it, it does buzz a little bit. Uh, I checked the neck relief. There's a slight bit of neck relief. I don't know if it needs a little bit more. Maybe some of the frets are a little high. Uh, I'm not sure. So I'm gonna do a little bit more uh, messing around with it come back and then see if uh, some of the changes that I've made uh, have made an improvement. So we'll be right back. Okay, I'm back from the bench. Uh, this has been a long process. Uh, finally got this guitar uh, set up the way I want it. Uh, I got uh, size 10 strings on this, 1046s. Uh, the intonation is set on it and uh, Everything seems to be, you know, I'm able to tune it up and everything seems to be sounding pretty good. So let's give this audio test. Let me just double check the tuning once again because I was playing around with it before I started the camera. So I just got this on a clean setting on uh, this uh, amp modeler. Here's some fuzz.
Okay, so after messing around with this uh, guitar for a little bit and uh, kind of setting it up the way I wanted it, uh, I don't think it sounds too bad. It doesn't play uh, too bad. It's uh, got good action now that I've, I've lowered it, and I did have to file down uh, the nut slots, uh, string slots in the nut a little bit uh, just to get everything kind of the way I wanted it. Um, and then, I don't know, I kind of feel silly about not knowing that that's the way those volume pots work, that if you turned one down to zero, it cut the other one out completely. I'm, I'm not sure. That kind of doesn't seem logical to me, but I guess that's the way that uh, Les Paul, actual Gibson Les Pauls are wired, and my Epiphone SG is also wired the same way. So I guess that's not an issue. And uh, tightening up those uh, screws on the tuning keys uh, fixed that problem. Uh, so really, overall, there's not much I can say uh, about it negatively other than the fact that it needed some setup. But just about every inexpensive guitar that I've purchased and reviewed on this channel has had to have uh, some sort of setup. And I'm, I'm not sure why they put eight size eight strings on it. Um, I like tens. I put tens on it. I think they sound uh, pretty good. Um, so yeah, overall impressions. It's a it's a nice guitar. I'm still not a big fan of the Les Paul style guitar. I don't know why. Uh, I think it could be the weight. They're they're pretty heavy. Uh, the short scale length too is is maybe maybe a factor. Um, I really kind of prefer uh, Strat style guitars with the Strat neck, but then I like humbuck, humbucker pickups. So, uh, yeah. So anyway, there it is. That's the Firefly FFSP. Uh, it used to be LP, but uh, they, they changed it. They must have got a little bit of uh, heat from uh, Gibson on that. So now it's uh, the model number is FFSP. Uh, it's a pretty decent guitar. Um, uh, definitely for the price, it's uh, definitely good. Uh, it just kind of threw me a little bit because some of the things uh, weren't quite set up right on it and uh, I wasn't familiar with the way those uh, volume knobs worked, obviously. So anyway, there you go. I appreciate everybody tuning in and putting up with my nonsense. Um, we'll have some more guitars I got some coming uh, on Friday. I'm going to do some uh, reviews this weekend and uh, I'm going to resurrect some old videos from my old channel and, and upload them just for historical purposes. Uh, so there should be quite a bit of content coming your way soon. I appreciate everybody tuning in and we'll see you next time.